everybody. It's Thursday again, uh, and we had last Thursday off, but now we're back to work, and uh, it's time for the Every Other Thursday video. My name is George Williams. I'm the next Search Catalog Coordinator at Northeast Kansas Library System. I'm Christopher Brandon with the Coeur d'Alene Public Library and the Cooperative Information Network. And today we're going to be talking about a bug again. Christopher's got his panel of bugs behind him. I've got my pinball machine behind me, which is out in the garage, and it's probably got some bugs living in it. <laughs> so yes, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, specifically bug 9567. Before we jump into that, here is a quick message about Koha US. This video is sponsored by Koha US, your place to look for all things Koha. Whether you're just starting out with Koha or you've been with Koha for a while, Koha US is a great place to find resources, learn new tips and techniques, or connect with other users and libraries. Koha US provides excellent information both original and curated from around the internet, including the terrific every other day training videos. You will also find several special interest groups to connect with, as well as our general monthly meeting where we gather to talk about the latest Koha news. You should also check out the Koha U.S. Annual Conference, held at various locations around the U.S. This is a great opportunity to meet with other users face-to-face -face and build your Koha network, as well as new friendships. And of course, don't forget about the great presentations. Koha U.S. is also actively involved in the Koha community by contributing towards new developments. If you are interested in contributing towards Koha U.S.-funded developments, join the Koha U.S. membership. Your annual membership builds the funds to sponsor new developments in the community, and as a member, you also help shape Koha US with your membership votes, and receive a discount on the annual conference. You can also contribute towards developments through a direct donation, or by purchasing some great Koha US merchandise through our Threadless account. Visit us at KohaUS.org to find out more. So as bug a, nine five six seven, that's only is a four-digit bug. An only but a goodie. Um, Twenty thirteen. Wow. And with, what's really weird is it's still on a new status. Uh, yeah, nobody's messed with it. Nobody I, wants to to write the enhancement to make this possible. And actually, I wrote a uh, a bug uh, a bug. I think it was three four nine two five. Uh, and it was marked as a duplicate of this, but um, there was a little bit of discussion in it before they said, oh, there's a duplicate out there, and they pointed back to this one. So it's been hanging out there for quite a while. Yeah. Um, but basically, you know, it has to do with creating favorites uh, reports per user. Um, so let me show you what this is all about. Okay. So basically what's happening here is we've got a lot of reports. We've got 428 uh, reports. Uh, in fact, George and I were just comparing how many reports that we have. How many reports do you have right now? Uh, 833, which when I started at Nichols, that was, it was over 2,500. Yeah, so a lot of reports to go through. There are several reports that that I work through uh, uh on a regular basis. And so when I'm looking for those reports, you know, I I have to remember something about that report in order to find it. Uh, I either have to, you know, know what category it is in or uh, part of a name. Like I have a couple of test reports that I use um, called experiments that I do some testing in so I don't create a ton of uh, bloat in the reports with a lot of tests. Mine are called sandbox. <laughs> so I have I have a, uh, several reports that I that I commonly use, and you know I was thinking, man, wouldn't it be helpful if there was a way that we could mark those as uh, favorites? And uh, right now there isn't any kind of favorites mechanism for reports. Now, I know that there are some folks out there that are doing certain things in order to find their favorite reports, like throwing some sort of uh, hashtag in the description. That's what I do. Yeah. Um, which, you know, works. It works. 
but uh, I'm I'm sh I'm sure that there are you know uh, ways that that can uh, go awry, especially if somebody else is editing reports and takes that out of there. Like, why is this in here? You know, it, and it also bloats uh, descriptions. I mean, if you've got thirty people that want to mark a report as their favorite, I can imagine that's going to look quite ugly after a while. Probably, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so there are some things that could go awry with with using that particular method. Not to say that that isn't a an okay method, um, but it would be nice if there was a mechanism uh, involved for this. And that's why uh, there is a discussion about uh, favorite reports. This one uh, went back to 2013, uh, still in a new status. Um, I, you know, part of the discussion that I was having uh, with folks in this bug uh, was that, you know, the hashtag uh, might be a, a difficult way to manage favorites. Uh, a table that managed favorites would be more ideal in my opinion because not only could you track your favorite reports uh and have that follow you around and you know one discussion um had been oh could you do that with cookies yes you could uh, do it with cookies but then you then have, you're stuck to one machine yes you'd have to establish that on every single computer that you log in on right which is not ideal um so cookies is kind of out for me I, I i don't like relying on cookies for you know something that you want following you around uh hashtags uh does that better but favorites would be good plus if this was in a table i i could envision that that favorites could be utilized for other things other than just reports maybe you have specific lists uh public lists you know right. not necessarily just uh things you know you might not want to just see everything that you've created you might not want to just see all of the public and sift through that there might be some specific lists that you need to deal with on a regular basis and having your favorites there would be helpful maybe there are other things in koha that you would be wanting to mark as favorites now or in the future as we establish other other features um so you know a table seems like it would be an ideal way to track those hmm. so um again that is bug nine five six seven i mentioned uh i had created this before somebody pointed out oh this has been a topic for a while and it's been a topic for a long while a dead topic but I had created <laughs> bug 34925. And if you look over at that one, um, there's more of the same, but there might be a little uh, bit extra that I didn't repeat in the original. Right. So, you know, uh, I, I do love the fact that we can categorize uh, our reports, but sometimes that's not uh, enough. Um, yeah, you do have subcategories. Again, sometimes that's not enough, and not everybody gets a, a choice in in those categorizations. Plus, you know, I can do yeah, I could do like I have admin reports, and I can do a subcategory that is focused on me. But what if you have three people that that want you know to mark that as their favorite? Yes, the fact. Yeah, the issue with the categories is that you could only put a report into one category and one subcategory. Right. If you could put a report in more than one category, then I, that might be an interesting way of dealing with else with this also. Yeah. Um, the my biggest, you know, the biggest issues that we have with reports. The reason that we at one point had over two thousand five hundred reports is because when people create reports, they often don't put notes and descriptions on them. Um, that would be my biggest issue. That's the reason we had 2,500 reports is because when prior people were working here, 
like somebody would call our office and say, I need a report that does A, B, and C. And then uh, Mickey would call Bywater and say, can you do a report that does A, B, and C? And an employee at Bywater would write a report that does A, B, and C, put it on our system. It wouldn't get a good title. It wouldn't get good notes. And then a week later, somebody at a different library would call and talk to Liz and say, I need a report that does A, B, and C. And then Liz would write a report that does A, B, and C because she couldn't find the report that Mickey had had, had, had created because it wasn't noted or titled well. And then all of a sudden we've got two reports that does A, B, and C. And that happened for a period of, you know, eight years. And then voila, you've got 2,800 reports, 2,500 reports. With some of them with great names, like I don't know what this does or question mark, question mark, question mark. And there was a lot of glean, there was a lot of killing of reports at one point here. When, Which is, you know, a good reason to have in your organization somebody to be the go-to about reports. Yeah. Not just have, you know, hand out those, those uh, permissions, you know, willy nilly because right. more hands that you have in there, the more chance that you have for duplication, but uh you know, and, and I imagine, too, if you have people that can go that go directly to your support vendor rather than vetting through uh, your local support first. Right. Who knows how much they're actually searching your existing reports to see if you have anything comparable before they just write or pull from their resources to give you a report. So and, and that would often be an issue where somebody would want a report that does A, B and C. And so that report would get created. And then a month later, somebody else would want a report that does A, B, C, D, and E. And then all of a sudden, we've got a report that does A, B, C, D, A, B, C, and then A, B, C, D, E. And when really the report that did A, B, C, D, E would have been enough. It's just modifying right. that existing report would have been enough. Right. I've actually, one other suggestion I can have for reports. What I try to do is this is the template um, for a description for a report. And I give it an ID and I, because I'm using the HTML uh, descriptions, um, I give the, I put it all in a div and I give it a, a class and, a, and an ID, but I, essentially I've got a spot for a title. And then when, when does this report cover whose stuff how are the, the results grouped and sorted? Does it have links in it? Are there any notes? And so that way I can just plug this template into that description field and then fill in the blanks, so to speak, so that there's a good description there. That way every report, you know, at least tells you what it's doing, what time frame of data it covers, and then what kind of stuff the report's doing. Um, but reports are hard to wrangle and just having a favorite, you know, page for favorite reports, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Very nice. All right. Well, you know, short videos, but uh, very good information. Maybe this will generate more discussion uh, on the bug or uh, generate some more ideas, maybe other workarounds, but uh, um, certainly something worth talking about. Um, so that is it for this week. As always, you can check out all our great resources at coha-us.org. You can also find our videos at YouTube slash, uh, there's youtube.com slash Koha US, no hyphen. And you can like, subscribe, and comment. You can do all the good stuff that one would want to do to make our videos stand out. Uh, so please check us out on uh, both sites and we'll see everybody again in two weeks. See you later.